our Lord and our Master, we give you praise and thanks for your gift of life and the gift of this day. We continue to praise and bless your name for all your goodness and kindness towards us as a university and as a nation. We thank you for your grace that has kept and sustained us and brought us this far, even as a university. Even in the midst of all the challenges that COVID-19 has brought upon us as a people, by your grace and your mercy, we've been able to pull through until now. We thank you and we share the joy of these, our students, uh, your sons and daughters who are graduating today. We thank you for the leadership of our university. We thank you for the direction, the courage, the wisdom, and all the provisions you've made for us as a university that has made it possible for us to see our students through to the end of their education at this time. Even as we embark on this virtual graduation, we commend this program before you that your grace and your mercy, your guidance will be with us to see us through it successfully. And at the end of it, we'll be careful to continue to give you praise and thanks. We thank you for hearing our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. By the powers conferred on me as chairman of the governing council of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, I, Ambassador Nana Ifapinti, declare this assembly duly constituted. Lift every voice and sing, till of the heaven bring, bring with us harmonies of liberty. Let all rejoice and rise, high as the listening skies, let it resound and loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the darkness has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on until victory is won. Only the road we trod, beat on the chastening road, felt in the days when the hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, of not a weary feet, come to the place for which a father sighed. We have come over a way that we tears have been watered. We have come treading a path to the blood of the slaughtered. Out from the gloomy past, till now we stood on a glass, where the white gleam of our breast is cast. Stand true 
tu vas compte, tu te connais, The Chancellor, His Majesty, Otun Forsay Tutu II, Chairman of Council, Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Provost of Colleges, Directors, Deans of Faculties, Heads of Department, Members of Convocation, Nananum, Parents and Guidance, Distinguished Viewers, Fellow Graduates, Ladies and Gentlemen. I am very honored to be called upon to deliver this year's valedictory speech on behalf of my colleagues, the 2020 graduates of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. It is an honor I will forever treasure in my life. It is quite unfortunate circumstances have denied us to meet in person to grace this occasion. Nevertheless, it evokes the uniqueness of this occasion because it is the first of its kind. Colleagues, our four-year journey in this noble institution, as we can all attest to, has not been an easy one. Yet, here we are. Borrowing Osibisa's words, the road was muddy, the road was rough, but we have gotten here. Whatever we have accomplished has been achieved through the combination of our drive, motivation, love, and support given by people around us. Life's vicissitudes has taught us to appreciate the effort of such individuals. It is therefore necessary to begin by appreciating and acknowledging such persons who have been instrumental in bringing us to where we are today. First and foremost, our greatest gratitude goes to the Almighty God for how far he has brought us. I agree with the psalmist who says, had it not been the Lord on our side, where would we have been? We could not have made it this far without his providence, especially in these trying times. We are also thankful to our parents and families for their immeasurable support. To our parents, we are grateful to you for the significant roles you've played in our lives, for your love, your patience, your counsel, and the burdens you bear and bore. You have been very wonderful in our life, most especially my mom and dad, Mr. and Mrs. Andam, God richly bless you. Many thanks to our provost, deans, heads of department, whose leadership has collectively ensured the right environment for our learning, training, and development in our respective academic units. To our lecturers, we salute you for the knowledge you have imparted in us and the impact you have made on our lives. We are privileged, indeed, to have been under your tutelage. Sir Isaac Newton once wrote in a letter to a fellow scientist, Robert Hooke, and stated that, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Same words I echo today. If you have seen further in the pursuit of excellence, it is by standing on the steady shoulders of our lecturers. Your counsels, guidance, and affability are worthy of acknowledging. Viva Academia, viva professores. Finally, we are thankful for one another. The sharing of knowledge and the readiness to help one another and the friendship that we have formed at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, I believe, would last a lifetime. The ups and downs of our stay here has taught us to network socially. It taught us how to lean on the shoulders of our colleagues, to pull ourselves together interdependently, plus many other lessons we will hold on tightly and forever. As Solomon noted, I quote, a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 17, verse 17, unquote. Within the past four years at this university, we have passed through pains and sometimes joy. Nevertheless, the course of life has refined us into our optimal self. Life journey has taught us to be humble, compassionate, selfless, and powerful beyond measure. Having passed through the refining process, it is time we show the world what we are made of. 
Let us glitter in any little corner we find ourselves. We should remember that as young graduates, we have a responsibility towards the development of our society and the country at large. The high educational standard we have been exposed to should challenge us to solve societal problems and not to add to them. To do this, it is imperative that we do away with every immoderate behavior. Let us use our energy and intellect to promote unity and development in our society for the better life for all. Or as Aristotle will put it in the political discourse, the good life. Remember, life journey has not ended. It has only begun. Let us show the world that we are indeed vital human resources. I believe with humility, perseverance, and optimism in our hearts, we will conquer. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Long live Ghana. Long live KNST. Long live the College of Humanities and Social Science. Thank you, and God bless you. The Chancellor, His Royal Majesty Otunfo Osei Tutu II, Chairman and Members of Council, Vice-Chancellor, Registrar, Provost of Colleges, Members of Convocation, Senior and Junior Staff, Graduates, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's an honor to be here today. Being here brings back nostalgic memories. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to engage with the university, very often with the College of Engineering. KNUST gave me the opportunity to experience my first leadership role as the president of the Electrical and Electronic Students Association, ELISA. KNUST also gave me a solid foundation that enabled me to become all that you know about me today, and I am very grateful. Let me use this opportunity to congratulate the leadership and student body for being ranked the best university in Ghana and West Africa by the US News and World Report. Graduating class of 2020, congratulations. While many of you may be disappointed that the pandemic has altered the events this year, it should not take away four years of hard work commitment, and resolve to reach this milestone. Class of 2020 is touted globally as the class above all classes. You are graduating in unprecedented and challenging times. During a pandemic that will introduce a new normal, compounded by the rapid advancement and adoption of technology, you are unique and will be experiencing many firsts. Today, I would like to leave you with three thoughts that I believe will help you along your journey. One, have you thought about the fact that most of you will have to work virtually during your national service and even after that? How would you learn on the job when half the office block is empty? Your manager may come into the office block twice a week and then work from home for the rest of the week. But don't worry, many employers are also thinking through these questions and I believe they will make your experience worthwhile. But my advice to you, learning how to build and keep relationships will be critical. Treasure and the contacts you have made whilst on campus, those you will be making during your national service, your job interviews, your staff meetings, among others. Develop the skill of striking memorable acquaintances. Leave a mark so that they will remember you because don't forget that you will not be seeing them often. Times have changed. Touch base where you can, but of course, don't overdo it. It has helped me and I know it will help you too. Two, many employers are rapidly exploring adopting digital tools. How will you navigate these tools? How will you remain relevant to your employer few years after employment? 
we at Vodafone have been working on enabling a digital workforce and a digital workplace. Our service engineers no longer come to the office daily. They have tools. Our call center agents are all working from home. Would you believe that? They have tools. We have been exploring many other collaborative tools to improve, improve ways of working for the entire organization. And I'm not just referring to the engineers. I'm talking about finance, HR, legal. All these will require that you are digitally literate. I told some students a few days ago, digital literacy is not computer literacy. Computer literacy is knowing how to use the computer. Digital literacy is being able to use the digital tools and the apps to carry out your day-to-day -day task and run your business. Remember, this is no longer a choice. Your employers are already using these tools or will soon adopt the use of these tools. Learning is a process, not an event. Learning should not stop just because you have graduated. For the budding entrepreneurs amongst you, history has shown that the greatest innovations in science, transportation, technology, and many other fields are born during crisis. How do you plan to compete though? Which of the problems of this new normal are you hoping to solve? My advice, make sure you adopt one form of technology or the other in how you market your products, how your customers contact you, how you manage your stock, how you produce, how you deliver your goods. Don't let the many young people who are trying to produce what you are also producing overtake you because they chose smarter ways of doing it by using technology. Try new things. Don't let the fear of failure paralyze you into inaction. Adopt technology. You will thank me later. My third and final goes to our female graduates in particular, but will work for our gentlemen as well. You will not be able to change the way people have been socialized. You will encounter people with their own biases, conscious and unconscious. Sometimes people try to make you feel inferior and incapable. I found this motivational quote and I fell in love with it. I quote, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent, unquote. Self-worth will not happen by chance. If you find people who tell you that you are good, you are capable, thank God. However, if you don't, and that happens very often, I ask you today to keep reminding yourself every morning till your whole being believes that you are good. You are better than you think. Feel motivated, follow your instincts, and have confidence that with God in your journey, you will end well. You are a class of change makers, and I am certain that you will reach your full potential and impact lives and communities around you in the process. Your journey has just begun. As I always say, I will be looking out for your amazing stories. Congratulations once again. I thank you all. Dusty, fully empty. The loudness of the silence in our classrooms. The wind sounding louder than the engines of buses. 8 a.m. used to be rush hour, but now, lateness is underrated. Everything we do now is so virtual. That bad handwriting is a thing in the past. Times New Roman is just a click away. Lecturers are officially vloggers. Classmates are now Facebook friends. Right now it's like, show me your classroom and I will show you where the network is the strongest. Who would have thought that education would ever meet its march so soon? Regardless, we shall click to start test. Click to submit. Click to graduate. Because we need to move on. The future awaits you and me. Stay safe, friend. Because this war tends to the pit.
Chairman and members of the University Council, Vice Chancellor, past Vice Chancellors and Pro Vice Chancellors, colleague Vice Chancellors, Pro Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Provost of Colleges, Deans and Directors, Heads of Department, Members of Convocation, Representatives from our affiliated institutions, Nananum, alumni of the university, senior and junior staff, graduating class of 2020, parents and guardians, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the chairman of the members of the governing council, the vice chancellor, management and entire staff of this great institution, it is my pleasure to warmly welcome all graduates and esteemed guests who are with us with this, this afternoon through the virtual platform to the first day of our 54th congregation ceremony. You will all agree with me that today's ceremony is extraordinary as it marks the first time the, in the history of the university that graduation ceremony is organized without the usual pomp and pageantry and notably without the physical presence of our cherished graduates. As we are aware, the coronavirus pandemic has changed the world order and in very significant ways, and we all have to adapt to the new normal and devise safe and innovative ways of moving on with our life. Ladies and gentlemen, we have gathered via the virtual platform this afternoon to confer degrees on our deserving graduates of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences and to celebrate them for the successful completion of their various programs of study. I wish to use this opportunity to congratulate you for achieving this milestone in your lives. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a delight to inform you that the College of Humanities and Social Sciences has presented a total of 2,286 undergraduate graduates this afternoon. This is made up of 1,138 males, representing 49.8% and 1,148 females, representing 50.2%. Of this number, 325 are graduating with first class honors. That is representing 15.4%. 1,137 representing 50% are going home with a second class honors, the upper division. 762, that is 33%, are graduating with second class lower division. Only 25 students are going home with a pass, and this represents 1.2%. 0.9%. This year, the overall best graduating student is in the college, in the college comes from the Department of History and Political Studies, who also happens to be a valedictorian for this congregation. He is Master Andam Sylvester Atta, and he's graduating with a CWA of 81.3. Six. Enrollment in the college. Ladies and gentlemen, with respect to student enrollment in the college, for the 2019-2020 academic year under review, undergraduate students numbers increased from 9,933 to 12,366, which is 25.5% increment relative to the 20. 18, 2019 academic year. During the year under review, the Department of Modern Language was rechristened as Department of Language and Communication Sciences. And the, and the list of programs were introduced in line with current global trends. BA French, BA Communication Studies, BA Linguistics. Furthermore, the BA Akan and BA French programs were reviewed and renamed BA French and Francophone Studies and BA 
Akan and culture. In preparation to receive the expected increase in admissions in the coming year, the college is working hard to complete the ongoing Faculty of Social Sciences block to provide additional space for teaching and learning. We are grateful to the government for the additional hands that the college has received. This will go a long way to ease the stress on our staff. However, with our, with our incessant drive to expand the coming of the first batch of the free senior high school students, we anticipate an increase in our enrollment for the 2020-2021 academic year, which will require more lecturers so that we do not fall or fail in our quest in doing a very good job. And for that matter, also not fall foul of the National Council of Tertiary Education requirement for student lecturer ratio. The increase in student numbers must be complemented with teaching and learning facilities. In this regard, we will entreat GetFund to assist us with additional teaching and learning facilities. Some initiative in the college. In line with the human resource development objective of the college and the requirement of the National Accreditation Board, as well as the National Teaching Commission of Education, for all faculty members to have terminal degrees, the college is supporting some members of staff to upgrade in both local and international institutions. The Faculty of Law admitted three candidates for, the, for its first batch of students to commence its Doctor of Philosophy in Law program. The PhD in Law is primarily designed to support staff development and contribution towards the production of domestically trained legal, legal academics and practitioners. The Department of Accounting and Finance of the KNWST School of Business, headed by Professor Nathaniel Bosu, won a US aid grant of 15 million United States dollars with the academic Arizona State University. Out of this amount, 7 million 500,000 500, United States dollars that is 7.5 million was for KNWST. The Department of Marketing and Corporate Strategy of the same institution, that is KSB, in collaboration with other higher ed education institutions in Africa and the University of Groningen, uh, EU technical partner, submitted an application for mo mobility funding in intra-Africa Academic Mobility Scheme 2020, a joint initiative of the African Union and the European Union. The project is titled Capacity Enhancement of Innovation and Entrepreneurship in Higher Education Institutions, Bridging the Gap Between Academia and Industry. And it aims at utilizing the mobility scheme in building capacity and innovation and entrepreneurship among participating university to produce uh, employable graduates, improve the quality of higher education, strengthen mobilization, modernization, and inter internationalization of African higher education institutions, and promote the development of an African higher education and research space. The Department of History and Rural Development organized a staff development workshop for its staff and capacity for capacity building. Furthermore, in collaboration with Professor Samuel Adupra of the Department of Geography and Geology of the Sam Houston University of Texas at the USA, they won the Carnegie African Diaspora Fellowship Program for the 2019-2020 academic year. Under the program, the professor, Samuel Adupra, was to be hosted 
by the department to support teaching and research, including capacity training for staff and students in GIS. It's however sad to note that his coming did not happen because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Department of Economics also won an institutional grant of $20,000 from the African Economic Research Consortium to purchase ICT equipment in support of postgraduate teaching and research. In collaboration with the Rural Enterprises Project, Ministry of Trade of Ghana, the Department of Economics again won a grant to support research in economics on value chain study of Kinte in the Jusu and Kwabri districts of the Ashanti region. Appreciation. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, I wish to express our sincerest appreciation to our stakeholders who have been of immense support to the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. These stakeholders include the Bank of Ghana, USAID, Arizona State University, Sam Houston State University of Texas, the French Embassy in Ghana, the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Ghana, to mention but a few. I appreciate, the, I appreciate and thank all parents, guardians, and beneficiaries of our graduates. If our graduates stand tall today, we know they are standing on your toils and sweat. Your unflinching support has propelled them to this great achievement, and may your sacrifices be rewarded. Again, I used to thank our gallant graduates and all other students for their cooperation during the semester. When, as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, we suddenly had to switch from our traditional method of teaching and learning to the virtual mode. It was unexpected. However, you prove your mind by adjusting to the circumstances. To my able staff of the college, I am truly grateful for your support. And it was through your sacrifices and effort that we are able to bring the semester to a successful end. Even though the federal teaching was new to some of us, we adjusted and soldiered on to deliver our mandate as the institution. I say, bravo. Now, a word of advice to our graduates and some conclusion. I would at this point want to say a word of advice to you, my proud graduates. I want to congratulate you once again for the great success for which you are being celebrated today. We share in your joy and achievements. We on our part have done all within our limited resources to provide you with the needed knowledge and skills to be functional in society. It is now up to you to make maximum use of the acquired knowledge and skills for the betterment of society and yourselves. As the world continues to change, please continue to build on your skills and knowledge so you can continuously remain relevant in the changing times. Make, us, make use of your skills in the identification of problems, proposal development, investigation, etc., to create value and efficiency in whichever sector you find yourself. Be reminded that in life, it never gets easier. That as you strive, you get better. I leave you with a quote from the biblical devotion which states, success isn't automatically given to us. It is pursued with all the energy and sweat we can master. Obstacles and struggles are part of life. They make us appreciate success. 
If everything come easy, you will never know how it feels to succeed. Obstacles are meant to be overcome. Fear was meant to be conquered, and success was meant to be achieved. I wish to encourage you to register with the News Alumni Association and entreat you to be active members of this global fraternity. This is a great platform of networking and for the organization and mobilization of resources to support your alma mater, the KNUST. Finally, I pray that the good Lord establishes you and grants you abundant success in every endeavor of yours. May he open heavens, the storehouse of his beautiful blessings and goodness for all the work of your hands. Once again, thank you all for making time to join us and on the virtual space and for your audience. God richly bless you all. Chairman of Council, with your permission, I call on the Provost College of Humanities and Social Sciences to present the candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the award of degrees to be admitted to the said degrees. Chairman of Council, I have the honor and privilege to present to you graduates of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, all of whom have fulfilled the requirements for the awards of degrees to be admitted to the said degree. Graduates, are you cool? By the powers conferred on me as chairman of the Governing Council of the University, I, Ambassador Nana Efapinti, formally admit you to the respective degrees of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi. Graduating class of 2020, are you cool? of Science, Hospitality and Tourism Management. First class, I do mention Ivy. A free year Nelly Abna. Alomatu Benjamin. Anin Dell and Estina. Wahin Emmanuel. Wache Sandra. Hadi Angwoko Vanessa, Mohamed Umar, Enkroma Marion Esi, Opari Emilia, Opoku Francis Osei, Koku Priscilla, Selby Ransom. Second Class Upper Division, AJ Daniel. AJ Emmanuel Odro, Adu Nyaku Emmanuel, Amevo Perpetual Mauto, Ankama Miki Otabi, Ahin Bernard Kwesi Mreku, Ahin Gift, Asubantin Louisa, Ato Sheila Dede, Etuahini Patient, Wachi Dankwa Sylvie, Rifu Emmanuel Ajin, Kakari Christopher Boache, Khalid Nasira, Mensa Gilord Atu, Ngua Apeko Yao, Isian Boateng Gwajizbe, Intiamwa Jod, Obin Ejei Samuel, Okosu Ajua Elizabeth, Opoku Rahel Ama Safu Fifi Tete Ruth Second Class Lower Division Abuaji Asabre Mami Nyako Abram Daniel Efriye Porsia Wahima Amisa Jeffrey Apia Mika Abigail 
Kofi Lorinda AC, Mafo Jessica, Mensa Vincent Ajate, Obri Yabua Richard, Okai Ni Ayite Caleb, Ochi Eugene, Owusu Mabel Osei, Grayson Ernest Kweku Smith, By the powers conferred on me as chairman of the governing council of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, I, Ambassador Nane Ifarpentin, declare this assembly duly dissolved. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, our help in ages past, our hope for the years to come, our shelter in the stormy winds. We thank you for a successful and inspiring graduation ceremony in which your daughters and sons have officially been acknowledged for their respective qualifications. We join KNUSD in thanking you for the new leadership and the new era. Together with your sons and daughters, we have graduated in this ceremony. We say thank you for how far you have brought them in the journey of serious academic work and for crowning their efforts with success. You have seen them through all the difficulties and challenges, and they have come out successfully. As you have opened a new stage in their lives to go out and put into practice all that they have learned, we pray you grant all of them the necessary graces they need to be able to make good use of every opportunity that you grant them. Be the alpha and omega of their lives, Go before them and behind them, beside them and above them. Keep them safe forever. Deliver them from the snares of the evil one. Keep them safe from destruction and disappointment. Be their shield in every present danger and discouragement. Their consolations in times of difficulty and all forms of challenge.